Welcome to the Magic on the Inside podcast by the Sisters Enchanted, where we chat magic, hot topics, personal development, and good old-fashioned life. Brew up something delicious and sit with us for a spell. Hey there, Magic Maker. It's Sarah Walker here, founder of the Sisters Enchanted, where it's our mission to make magic mainstream. And today on this episode of the Magic on the Inside podcast, I have the pleasure of speaking with Sarah Milne of Mosaic Holistic Life. Sarah is an amazing, amazing, I can't say that more, amazing person with a beautiful and empowering life story. She has experienced so much and has so much to offer to the world. So listen in as Sarah talks about her life as an everyday witch making everyday magic. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> Sarah and Sarah. Yeah. Um, welcome. Um, welcome, everybody who's watching or listening to this. This is Sarah Milne of Mosaic Holistic Life Coaching. Um, Sarah is one of our very own Enchanted Sisters and has so much life experience doing all different things um, and has had some definite ups and downs in her own life and has brought all of this along with her magical witchy ways into this amazing holistic life coaching that she's doing, um, which she'll talk more about. So anyway, welcome to the podcast, Sarah. Why don't you tell us a little bit about you to kick us off here? Okay. So I'm, um, I'm quite, it's, it's interesting. I'm, I'd say I'm quite a new, but very old witch, I feel, I, <laughs> in the sense that it's only um, in the last year since my my, my my family are very Christian, but my dad was a very Anglo-Catholic Christian. And um, when he passed away just before Christmas in 2017, that's when I think I discovered how witchy I am <laughs> um, <laughs> when I was looking for sort of like comfort and solace after that. And um, when I say an old witch, so it's really quite new practicing. But when I say an old witch, it's because I know a lot of people feel the same. It's that feeling of remembering. Mm -hmm. It's like nothing's I'm not learning anything I just had it all anyway it's that kind of like I knew this I knew how to read tarot I knew um I always felt that um the woods were magical and I always looked at the moon and when we used to go to Cornwall as families and we used to go to these like crystal shops and witchy shops my family would all be like get out get out quick quick and I'd just be like no no I want to spend my pocket money in here so it's kind of um it's that realization that actually this is what I've been all my life and a lot of people have say the same and you just feel now I make sense to myself so, um, so I'm kind of a mix of, of new, but I feel experienced within, you know, it's a funny one. Um, yeah. No, I love it. You and I chatted recently, actually, and I can totally get that about you. Um, and because when you do talk about like just the seasons and the wheel of the year, it's very natural to you. Like, like, yeah, yeah I've, I've totally know all this, like I've been into this forever, right? you know, <laughs> it's totally really natural. Yeah, it does. But I, I, I think it's, and it, it fascinates me because I want to know where it came from. And my dad was brought up, but he was, um, his dad was a vicar. But at the same time, my dad's really superstitious. He was really superstitious. He'd be like, he'd had to salute magpies and spit when there was a hay bale going past on the road and uh, all these kind of things, not walk under ladders, not walk across. So I kind of feel that he had someone witchy in his family because for him to be so, such a religious upbringing, but have all these superstitions. Yeah. That speaks to me. So I feel that there's some, something, but I couldn't, my family is so anti and so against it that I could never ask them. <laughs> That's so interesting. I always, those are, I think the most fascinating people, the people that are like, um, you know, very mainstream religious and very like kind of judgmental of other belief systems, but are also the first ones to, um, like you said, not walk under the ladder to like yeah. talk about the ghost story or like whatever. They're the first ones to be all about it. And you're like, listen, oh, you're right. I know. That's right. <laughs> that's, that's exactly it. Yeah. My mom yeah. Was once, she was, she won't watch this. So I can say she was once um, having a real go at me about my witchiness and it was a full moon. And I just felt like saying, so why are you getting so hot under the collar? It's on a full moon. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you, <laughs> you <deserve> that. <laughs> that's so awesome. So, um, so you, you talked about being a new old witch. So like it's always been there with, yeah. within you. How, um, and you do this, the, we want to talk a little bit actually about you have the name mosaic, um, yeah. holistic life coaching. So how has sort of 
tapping into this magical side, remembering your witchiness and bringing it to life. How, how does this contribute to your life as it is now? And what does the mosaic piece of your name have to do with all of this? Okay. So basically, um, my, yeah, my life has been, I, my life has been a mosaic and I always described it as before I kind of like knew what I was going to do with the concept as a mosaic because I've, I've got a little boy who's 14. He's had two multi-organ transplants. We've had kind of like, I had a good job. I was in charge of, I'm a psychology graduate, well, PhD psychologist. I was in charge of all the psychology in all the London jails, massive job. And he came along quite a sick baby. And gradually I had to go part-time, give up job, get a freelance job, give that one up. And just kind of like, uh, life came crashing down really. And, um, and obviously the worst thing in your life is to be told your child probably won't survive and to be told that over and over again. And then you get back on track and then you're told it again. Things And um, so I've always, and people say like, people always say when you've got a child like, Oh, you're so inspirational. You feel a bit embarrassed. Like I'm not, I'm just doing what I have to do. But I've kind of, from watching other people go through things, I've realized that I am good at picking up the pieces and carrying on. So that's why mosaic because when everything smashes down, I tend to just very quickly and instinctively just be like, well, that's gone, but let's have a look at the broken pieces on the floor and pick up the prettiest ones and the most interesting ones. And then let's put them together in a new way and create something new out of it. So that's where the mosaic comes from. And it's kind of, it makes you, make, makes your life look a bit chaotic and a bit awful and a bit kind of like, where did that, how did you come from doing that to this? But it's because sometimes life crashes down so much that you can't carry on the way you were. And if you try, you just, it's going to be a struggle so that's the mosaic it's, it's picking up the beautiful pieces and making something new out of them like a mosaic um and then of course i i got more into the witchy things and i kept asking my tarot cards like because i do i'm a, at the moment i'm a secondary school teacher but it's not enough for us to survive on because we've got a huge amount of debts and things because of the every time william's been in hospital we've had to take out loans to cover i mean luckily in the uk we get at a moment fingers crossed it stays we get our half <laughs> paid for but you don't get paid for the fact you can't work for months on end of course mm -hmm. um so we i had i need a secondary income or i need a different job and i, I kept asking my cards what should i do what should i do and it kind of became clear that they were telling me this is it you you're not you don't need to ask because this is what you need to do you don't ask us what to do anymore just do it um and so i did do um just a little one of these little um diplomas in spiritual life coaching and i just thought i would put together this life coaching um business but it would be not kind of like super fit woman with a ponytail and her leggings on the school run with homemade muffins out of cab kits and tin you know <laughs> it would be for people like me that i just have exist from one crisis to the next but how do you do that because that's what people seem to be saying to me how do you do that how do you how are you still sane how are you still kind of like creative and that's my biggest thing I mean, for me it's been the creativity I've always been creative through what we've been through I've taken artistic photographs through one transplant and drawings through another and um so the mosaic is very much obviously your body and looking after your body and I've that's a lot of when we talk about some of the things I do each day and I've had a lot from your um self-care magic from that for that um but also being creative being spiritual all these things kind of in the mosaic yeah yeah, I your story it just gives me such such chill. You gave me chills like five times. Um, and I love the one of the first things you said when you're talking about it is was picking up the prettiest pieces, but also yeah. the most interesting pieces because yeah. those interesting ones aren't always the prettiest. No, they're not. They no. Are definitely things that make you who you are. And I think yeah. yeah. Like so many people want to shy away sometimes from the interesting things because maybe they hurt a little bit or maybe they're not perfect and you don't yeah. want people to see the things that aren't perfect. But I love that what you're saying is like, that's where the magic is found in those pretty bits, but exactly. also in those interesting bits. That's exactly it. And so like when I put myself out there for this business, it's not going to be like, look how perfect time it's going to be like, look how messy I am, but look how happy I am in the mess. You know, uh, our house is a, is a mess. Like sometimes people come around and you're just embarrassed. Like, oh. <laughs> story of my life. <laughs> yeah. But that is, you know, but I wouldn't want to change that really, because this is, uh, this is what life is. It's a hodgepodge of all these different things. Um, so, um, yeah, that's, that's, 
and it, I think it goes back to quite often we have to make excuses about how many times we make excuses for being ourselves. Mm-hmm. We don't have to, we just, you know, because we are these amazing mosaic, we all are this amazing mosaic of experiences. I've kind of like um, got now for the, for the mosaic, it sort of stands for, um, so it stands for manifest, optimize, synchronize, awaken, initiate and create. And that's what we all need to be doing all the time. And it yeah. doesn't matter what that looks like to other people is it's what we're trying to be and trying to create you know so uh you're so good and you like have a, you're a psych a psychologist psychologist or you have it yeah. yeah no you're totally going to be amazing you're a psychologist and a witch yeah. <laughs> like you are what everybody needs <laughs> it's going to be so good um So tell me a little bit about how you incorporate everyday magic into your life. So you are this beautiful mosaic. You have this incredible story and your, your son is, is he, is he well right now? Are you guys good? Um, He's, he's, he had a big setback in the summer. So we were back up in, because we have to go to hospital quite a long way away from us. Um, Well, not for your standards, but for UK standards, quite a long way. Um, He was up there in the summer. He had a setback. Um, and things are not perfect, but they're not drastic either. But every, like, I always remember um, 2013, on the 31st of, of December, I put up a Facebook status saying, say, I can now say that this year has been the only year we've never had any emergency hospital admissions. You know, it's been amazing. Not a single, the only year in his life. The very next day, he woke up with a big bloated tummy. And the very next day was the beginning of his, um, his journey to second transplant. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm never ever saying that again. So um, I think, you know, for us, the, it, it's, it's, we never know what tomorrow, literally we don't know what tomorrow is. So last time he was in hospital, I was out with my friend doing some shopping and he just sent me, because he has a stover bag, he sent me a message saying, should it look like that? And I'm just like, it was full of black blood. I'm like, no, it shouldn't. Oh man. And he was fine. When I left, what, the morning he was fine. So um, it's all very, it can be all quite sudden. So, um, and that's another thing that I think in the business, it's kind of like, we we have to go through change and uncertainty all the time and people find it difficult but we've learned to live in a constant state of change and uncertainty yeah. <laughs> like, what's, what's happening today no, I'm, I'm, my job might not you know if he's back in hospital again my job will go again because I've already taken a big chunk of time with him and obviously the head's not going to let that happen again so you know it really is kind of like and there's no certainty there's no security at all but life can be fun that way once you've learned how to navigate yeah. it. I think magic's a huge part of that. So how are you making, how are you using everyday magic in your life? Because you have this amazing outlook, even in a situation that most people can never imagine, you know, yeah. being in. So what does that look like for you? Like what sorts of things do you? The moon is my biggest thing. Moon yeah. is my, like every month I do my intentions on the new moon. Um, I. I follow the whole moon thing. I just love the moon. I'm always looking, where's the, what's, the, what's the moon doing? What should I be thinking? You know, where am I at? What, let me evaluate things. And it's great because it just means that every month there's a new chance. Like that month didn't work. That was a disaster. So when people put New Year's resolutions, it's like, oh, I've messed it up in January and people give up. But it's for me, it's like, well, okay, that month, that lunar cycle wasn't for me. So let's try the next one. <laughs> you know, um, that, so that's really big for me. The, the moon, really big for me. And also if I'm having a really bad day, um, if it's William or other stuff, I could just go out and stand and look at the moon and I just feel, oh, yes, it just fills me up with power and this, because sometimes the world can seem huge place when, when life's difficult, but somehow the moon just makes me feel big and powerful again. <laughs> so that's, I love that. me. and literally I'll, I'll just go out and stand under the moon, you know, and I get, every time I see the moon, I get a kick every time, you know, it's amazing. Um, from the, last year when it was the um magical self-care of the cinnamon coffee that was really good for me (laughs) crazy like my son also has um asperger's and which is a form of um autistic Mm -hmm. disorder and he has school phobia he's quite good at the minute but he's quite school phobic and he's also because he has asperger's and everything's black and white he's like and i can understand where he comes from why should i have to go to school when i might not live to be an adult and these exams are irrelevant to me and i can understand that um so we have a lot of stresses in the mornings particularly there's some test he doesn't feel ready for or anything panics so um that cinnamon coffee is brilliant because I don't have time for anything longer than that but Mm -hmm. it's just my first 
cup of coffee, that cinnamon goes on, I sprinkle it on, I say what I want from the universe for that day. And then when I'm drinking my coffee, I drink it in. So I ask the universe, I need strength today, or I need a sense of humor today because I've got a certain class or <laughs> I need, um, whatever it is I need. Um, uh -huh. and that really, that, that works. And I could keep remembering through the day what it was. Um, carrying crystals, I tend to, and I never know what crystal that you need. So I just, just pick, I'll just pick up the one that kind of feels the right one for the day. And yeah. carry, um, I've got a friend bought me, um, the, my secret Santa was another witchy girl at school. She just happened to have me. So she's bought me this lovely bottle with, filled up with crystals, which is going to be my, my, that's my new thing. So oh. my crystal water. Awesome. Um, so the little, there's little things, but I yeah. think the big, the moon is, and the tarot cards, I do um, a lot of, I do ask tarot a lot. And um, I, that's something I've found when I read for other people, it's been really strange for me, tarot, because I don't, again, I haven't learned it. I'm just, and I'm, I seem to learn it as I go, but sometimes mm -hmm. I'll do a reading and people, it's like, wow, that's so spot on. And it's just like, how did you do that? <laughs> so <laughs> I do use tarot quite a lot. Um, and I find that that really helps me um, listen to, listen to to the universe to mother nature to the goddesses whoever it is that's, that i need to yeah. listen to my, to my cards seem to be the way that they it took me a while it took me a while to find the right deck for me personally but once i'd found it then what's yeah. your deck of choice so my favorite deck earlier, um i have this one for me for my own readings oops, sorry that is the um shadow stick that's a good one yeah i have the deviant moon i love the deviant moon of, um for and I sometimes read for, and I also do love the right away so I've got the three decks but for me these I don't use at the moment for clients so this is or for friends or whatever. Yeah. these um and I think if I was going to use them I would get another set of them even yeah so I'd have I've two got a, I have a random shadowscapes card sitting right next yeah. to me just one card <laughs> not a full deck I have one card I've got the six oh, cards hanging out here <laughs> just fantastic I love that because that's my deck of choice yeah it's super pretty. Um, I'm the one that communicates to me. Yeah. Yeah. You were such an inspiration. Uh, <laughs> on this magical journey of yours, have you ever had like an, um, well, you just kind of shared a magical oops. I guess it wasn't a magical, but when you shared on Facebook that 2013 was like an yeah. awesome year and then the next day, <laughs> it was yeah. like that kind of, yeah. I guess I don't know if that's a magical oops or like a universe oops or what but do you have you ever had like a, an oops moment where you were like oh that's not exactly what I was thinking or that's not yeah, really what I, I have um at the end of last year um I was with a guy he was very lovely and um we both lost our dads within a few weeks of each other and it was all like awful and I wasn't I suppose I wasn't really thinking that straight but I did um we both needed an injection of cash at the time. So I did, um, I mean, well, just long sort of, we both could have done with some, some, like I said, it was, we're always needing extra money to survive. And so I did a um, candle spell and I named him as well in the spell. So I was like, we both need it. And, but I did it, a candle spell went over a week. It was gradually like burning down. And during that week, he was different on the phone, different on the phone, different on the phone. By the end of the week, we split up. And I think, now we're really good friends and it's great and I think it needed to happen because actually I wouldn't have I wouldn't have been able to because I was looking after him all the time like we do and oh. I wasn't able to with my own father because I was just constantly worried about him but I think I wouldn't name somebody else in the spell like that again because I, I think it just kind of the magic worked in a way that I wasn't really anticipating <laughs> it wasn't that wasn't what I asked for yeah um but looking back it was the right thing and I think the spell did work but it worked it worked in a different way so I think I'm quite wary of um if somebody wants a spell or something for them that's fine but for actually talking about two people in the same even if you're in a relationship together in the same spell I think maybe that didn't work I think very well for that, yeah. at, that for me, at that moment anyway so that's it it's not something I wouldn't necessarily do again but it's something that's like I'd be careful how I work yeah. it. Yeah, well, I always say to people, like, you never know what some where somebody else's energy is at and, like, what abundance will look like for them right now, you know? And so, yeah, no, I always i am like, well, maybe just put this on you. <laughs> it prosperity for two of us. It, the prosperity had to come by the break, and that, that yeah. wasn't what I was for. <laughs> well, yeah. Know, the magic knows sometimes better than you know what you need, so, yeah. You know. 
I like that. The magic knows. Yeah. All right. Let's do, um, we always do this with our guests. We do a little round of this or that so we can get to know you better. So you just choose the first thing that comes to mind. Are you ready? Yep. <laughs> We're going to see inside your soul now. Um, <laughs> all right. Books or movies? Books. Books. Earth or water? Ooh, that's difficult. Oh, crikey. Um, 50 50. I'm going to go for earth. That's difficult. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like if I asked you again tomorrow, you might change yeah. your answer. <laughs> yeah. Um, pizza or tacos? We don't have so many tacos here. We've just got Taco Bell has just arrived to the UK. So I'm going to say pizza for now, but I have yet to experience. Oh my goodness. I was just thinking to myself, that's a very American question probably. Yeah. <laughs> and also Taco Bell is totally not real tacos. So <laughs> don't base your Everyone's answer. Really excited about it. <laughs> Taco Bell. One day, like come stateside, like go to, or like, um, you know, like Southern US and get yourself a good taco. Yeah, All right. <laughs> um, day or night? Night. Um, tea or coffee? Coffee. Uh, pens or pencils? Ooh, pencils, I think. Yeah. But I like, <laughs> again, yeah. <laughs> I know. I feel like if you say, like, pens are really nice, but pencils, I'm always like, but pencil, like, can erase so nothing's permanent. <laughs> I love the way they thin the paper. And certainly if I was drawing, I would be pencil. But then I do like black ink drawings. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, cats or dogs? Cats. I have both, but my cat over there it's my yeah <laughs> she's staring you down don't answer wrong <laughs> um and the last one fire or air uh oh well, i'm sagittarius so i better say fire oh uh, i'm sagittarius too <laughs> happy belated birthday <laughs> um so for anybody who's watching or listening to this later on uh and what's like one thing you could tell them about kind of embracing a magical life and just uh seeing where the road takes you i would say the biggest thing for me is do it because i get a lot of opposition i get opposition from my family um all the time um i even i even put something because i did i did solstice and i had a nice quiet um in solstice and i have my candles i put a picture on my facebook and i have my brother and my mum saying jesus is the only light of the world and all this kind of you know so i get opposition and i think the thing is, though, if you feel it in your heart, do it anyway. Because I could have just stopped and thought, no, you know, and or, or kept it quiet and quiet and shy and not told anyone. So I think that's the thing I would say: if you feel it in your heart that this is the path for you, then do it, and don't worry what people say or think of you. Because just be authentic and show them that it's not evil. <laughs> My mum even <laughs> sometimes I think they think I'm doing some awful. You know, they don't, they don't understand what yeah. it is. I think, you know, I keep trying to say to me, magic is just intention with power anyway. Um, it's not anything evil. So I think, yeah, just um, do it, be authentic. Don't hide it under a bushel. Just be purely authentic and people can then see what it's about. I love that. Yeah, there's so much misconception and um, like people don't, I don't know. There's just a lot of misconception. And so it's really cool when people really just live their truth like you are. Yeah, and, uh, to do it. yeah, flip it on its head. So again, so Sarah Milne of Mosaic Holistic Life Coaching, and you can find Sarah on Facebook, right? Again, at Mosaic Holistic Life Coaching, and um, Sarah's got a new website coming soon with some stuff happening um, towards Inbook, right? I believe. Yeah, February. Yeah. So keep your eyes peeled for that. And you can find Sarah in a couple of our Facebook groups and in our community. So you can say hi, yeah, keep an eye out for her. Yeah. yeah, in her busy life. So <laughs> Sarah might have some time to pop in now and then. Um, so yeah, I think that's it. Sarah, you've been so inspirational. You're story is amazing. And so are you. So are you. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, you gave me so many chills. And um, you're making, you're using magic for the very best, very best way, like to see through the darkness and pick up those interesting bits and turn yeah. them yeah. into something beautiful. So yeah, keep doing your thing because it's totally needed. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, um, yeah. So again, Sarah Milne, thank you guys, or thank you for joining us and thank you guys for watching. And um, Sarah, I will, I'll see you around. Yeah, see you. Definitely. Take care. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.
thank you again so much to Sarah Milne of Mosaic Holistic Life for joining us on this episode of the Magic on the Inside podcast. You can find Sarah right on Facebook if you just search Mosaic Holistic Life. She's also hanging around in our community, so you can find her there and say hello and reach out to her because she's got some really, really awesome stuff that she's cooking up to share with the world. Again, I'm Sarah Waka, founder of the Sisters Enchanted, and I hope to see you on the next episode of the Magic on the Inside podcast. Take care.